Presidential candidates made some good promises this year. We'll get to them, but much of what they said was terrible. So we start with this year's worst promises. We'll count down 10 through 1. The 10th worst promise is from Donald Trump. I am a free trader. You know, a lot of the conservatives, they say, Donald Trump does not like free trade. Isn't that terrible? I want smart trade. What's smart trade? Smart trade is when two people agree to trade things. John, if you trade something from with a Chinese person in California and they send it to here to New York, it's because you think you're going to be better and they think so. If we push them across the Pacific Ocean to China, none of that changes. It's still smart trade according to the two people swapping things. But I guess smart trade to Donald means it, the government will decide. This one's okay, this one isn't. Well, there is no way for the government to decide. This trade is just a production technology that allows us to get more things for less in both countries. Well, he has a way to decide, kind of, on the <laughs> campaign trail. Mr. Trump sometimes got specific about how he would fix trade. He wants a 45% tax on imports from China, and if an American company brings in anything from Mexico, you are going to pay a 35% tax every time it crosses the border. We have to, or we're not going to have a country left. Everyone's ripping us. Dagan, everyone's ripping us. Tariffs can change where we produce things and how we produce them. The same way when we see an assembly line that lowers our costs and gets us up more products for cheaper, throwing handfuls of sand into that would change how we do things, and some people would get jobs. Protect some American jobs. It would make well, all of us poorer. Free education make every public college and university in this country tuition free. Listen to how they applaud this free stuff. John, every time a presidential candidate promises something for free, each economist who's worth his salt, a small piece of their soul, dies. There is no such thing as free. So that's why y'all are soulless, then. <laughs> it's yeah. because of them. The, right. the dismal science just got even dismaler. It, it, it takes real resources to create things. It's not free. The question is, what is the cost? Who pays it? And is it worth it? And if Sanders is going to make college free for everybody, it's not free. It just means some people are going to pay for other people's kids to go study worthless majors that don't increase their earnings, and then they're going to penalize kids who actually learn something in college by taxing them higher later. Why it should terrify other people? Because a lot of people say, I'm, I need daycare, and you know, some families don't know how to teach the kids. Let's start it. But is there anybody four. who thinks the K through 12 education system is doing very well educating our right. people? Extending this downward, is it suddenly going to make them smarter, John? Of course not. It's just going to waste more resources. Eighth worst campaign promise comes from both Democratic presidential candidates. I support a $12 national federal minimum wage. A living wage, 15 bucks an hour. What's wrong with that? They, you, know, you kind. Usually, John, when a, a libertarian type hears about the minimum wage, they might launch into this argument of, well, if that's a good idea, what about $20 an hour? How about $50, 100 you know, They've determined this is the well, reasonable amount. I, th that's usually the case. In this case, we're hearing $12, $15 an hour. The federal minimum is $7.25. The good news is we're not going to have to do thought experiments in the future if they get their way. Because if you double the federal minimum wage, it's going to be crushing for low-skill workers, particularly mm -hmm. teenagers getting their first job who aren't trying to support a family but are trying to build the basic skills of showing up for a job, hey. collecting a paycheck, and then moving up the ladder and later. Paul Krugman says there's just no evidence raising the minimum cost jobs. We should raise minimum wage. Have so let's be real. And, and, and the studies are a little vague. No, let's be real clear on what these studies are, though. They look at the existing changes in minimum wage we've done over the last 20 years, which is largely tinkering mm -hmm. around the margin with small changes phased in over time. And then it's hard to study because a lot of these places are high rollover employment where they don't have to fire people. They just hire fewer later. When we're talking about doubling the federal minimum, there's going to be no ambiguity left. You know what Hillary Clinton the unions would say they only raised the wage because they saw the minimum going up and that prompted them to do it. Most union work workers are not earning the minimum wage. If a union's doing its job, it's supposed to be raising the wages of its workers. They want a minimum wage to price out substitutes for their already wealthy union workers. They're looking at the press competition. After. And yeah. frankly, that's yeah. the job of unions at this point. They're doing this. The press competition for their employees. And, and just to be clear, if you say to somebody, what is, how many workers make the minimum wage in America? People would say 20, 30, 50 percent. It's about 5 percent. 
So somehow the free market gets companies voluntarily to pay well above the minimum wage. Welcome back to our political promise countdown. The seventh worst promise comes from, in my opinion, all the Republicans still in the race. We are going to have a Reagan-style rebuild of the United States military. It'll be bigger and better and stronger than ever before. We will utterly destroy ISIS. We will carpet bomb them into oblivion. I don't know if sand can glow in the dark, but we're going to find out. All right, there were two promises made there. Let's start with the first, which is rebuilding the military. What's wrong with that? The number of raw dollars the United States typically spends as much as the next eight countries on the globe on military defense, and a lot of those are our allies. The idea that this needs to get bigger is utterly insane. We could drastically shrink it and probably make ourselves safer if we got out of places where we've been poking hornet's nests. What about their point about the quantity that we're spending? It is much more than everybody else combined. It is less as a percent of our GDP than it was under Reagan. That's true. It's a huge number, but... here. John, this idea of even measuring it as a percent of our economy is wrong. If our economy grows 5%, is it that much harder to defend our borders? It should be dropping as a percent of our economy, not staying the same. Right, well, Marco Rubio says we've gutted the military because we'll have the smallest army since World War II, the smallest navy we've had in 100 years. How they're going to pay for it. These are, you know, market-oriented Republicans who don't think the government can run the post office, and they believe our military can run the international political order. This is just nuts. Our worst political promise countdown continues. We're now at number six. This one also comes from Donald Trump. After a police officer was killed, Trump said this. Anybody killing a police officer, death penalty, it's going to happen, okay? Can't go. We can't let this go. What's wrong with that? Since right. the 1970s, it's been cut in half, the number of cops All right, who died. Why, why not execute those who do kill cops? Well, I don't trust the government to be able to uh, run a death penalty in a way that convicts just those who are guilty versus those who are in a peri innocent period. But I think, uh, given the abuse of police power that we're seeing these last few years, I think rather than protecting cops, well, we should be more worried about protecting citizens from cops. My proposal, provide health care to all people, get private insurance out of health insurance. Get private insurance out of health insurance and our kind government. You won't have to, will take care of us. You won't have to fill out the forms. It's not even by himself. With a village, he cannot do this. <laughs> Universal health care says, I'm going to abolish the laws of scarcity. Because health care is scarce, we have to ration. He can make you not pay for it. That's with executive money, power right there, but abolishing the law of scarcity. That, that, that would be. But he's going to have to then say, or his agency, well, you get health care, you don't. You get it today, but not tomorrow. But they, only start, they only start doing that to, when basically the entire system is bankrupt. That's why Medicare Which doesn't work. pretty quickly. In, Medicare... Ver in Vermont, in his own state, he, they tried this. They passed single-payer health care. And, whoops, several years later, they study it. And the Democrat, who uh, was supposed to put it in office, said it's too much, costs too much, could create difficulties. It was just unsustainable. Don't worry, folks. We're going to be building the wall. We're going to build the wall. Are you ready? And who is going to pay for the wall? Who? You better believe it. Mexico is going to pay for the wall, and he's leading. Well, you know, if Donald Trump cares about having fewer Mexicans in the United States and more in Mexico, he better make sure his wall has a door that opens because net migration from Mexico to the United States has been negative most years since the recession. More people have been moving back. Now, I wouldn't say that's necessarily a good thing because the evidence is when immigrants come to the United States, they make our economy stronger, they benefit themselves greatly, but the native-born get a little bit wealthier for this. And contrary to crazy claims by lots of candidates, it doesn't steal our jobs or depress our wages. There's been so much crazy in this, this election season, it's hard to pick the absolutely worst campaign promise. There were so many bad ones. So the panel and I took a vote, and worst score went to this promise from Donald Trump. He will fix our law so there will be no more horrible, false media criticism. I'm going to open up our libel laws so when they write purposely negative and horrible and false articles, we can sue them and win lots of money. We're going to have people sue you like you never got sued before. Really applaud. They applaud. I mean, 
is picking this number one self-serving on my part? I, I you know, I, I kind of like getting sued because. I have a lot of money, and it's good publicity <laughs> for me, and... Uh, you have that in common with Donald Trump. That's right, but it's disgusting. Well, you know, the history of this country, we've had the Federalists had the Sedition Acts in the late 1790s trying to stifle this. They got rid of that. L Lincoln threw editors in jail. Uh, Wilson renewed the Sedition Act. And each time we came back to our senses, we don't need to repeat this one.